We made a big decision and we pulled the trigger on what we're gonna do with our engine situation. He wants to do this crazy idea of taking the outboard off the back of the boat and putting it on the dinghy while our sails are out. I feel like I'm the captain now and you don't have to come back. So see you later, guys. You're telling me to go play with my dinghy? <laughs> We're sailing good, bad, and ugly. Three years ago, we bought our boat off Craigslist for $5,000. I'm Kristen, and this is Matt. We are known to break the rules and do things a little less traditional. Hit subscribe to join the adventure. Thanks to our patrons for keeping us going. What's up guys? Welcome back to Sailing GBU. Today we are going to change our backyard. The cool thing about having a boat is if you're sick of seeing your surroundings, you can just move them. So that's what we're going to do today. But we have an interesting opportunity today. There's Hurricane Storm, Hurricane Storm, <laughs> Tropical Storm Peter is uh, just to the east of us right now. Yes, to the east of us. So it's giving us a unique opportunity to sail with a north wind, um, which really doesn't happen too much in Puerto Rico, definitely not in Vieques very often. So we're going to have a chance to kind of sail in the lee of the island and hopefully just sail straight to somewhere. Hopefully. The wind is a little bit light and I do see some squalls, but, you know, I'm, I'm pretty hyped to use the Tropical Storms bands to sail somewhere because I haven't really done that yet. I'm not All a right. Frenchman. Let's hit sail, as I say, because we got to get on over there before our nighttime. It might take a few hours. Time to hit sail. <laughs> Okay. guys so we're out here ripping it today i've already hit 7.2 knots which i can tell you i don't hit very often on this boat and the reason that's happening is because it's kind of light wind today but there's always squalls here so i have a lot of canvas up i have almost all my sails out so when it goes from like 5 to 10 knots all the way to like gusting up to 17 you can hit some speed you can really build it up but i don't care you know we obviously are thinking about repowering so we're going to be going back to the boat yard if I rip it too hard and I rip the mast down and I blow all the space. You're not doing it. It's definitely not that windy. Don't be dramatic. I can fix all that when I get there and I don't care. Today I'm sailing YOLO. Tropical storm sailing. You know, you don't do that with too much, too much sweetness. Hey guys, we just want to interrupt this video real quick to tell you about this week's sponsors, Native. Native has came up with some really great deodorants that we've been using for the last four weeks. Not only do they have really great scents, Cotton and Lily for sensitive arms, charcoal for guys. We have coconut and vanilla and cherry and vanilla macaroon. It's also a really great dry texture that lasts all day. And trust me guys, lasting all day is pretty important because as we've learned in life, cruising and sailing, this is an outdoor lifestyle, you sweat. Native helps you not be the stinky sailor, but still do it in a less impactful way. Also, they commit 1% to their plastic free containers sales to environmental nonprofits. And I know a lot of you are wondering what are the ingredients in the product? It's aluminum free and paraben free, vegan and cruelty free, and they have a lot of simple ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter. 
Another cool thing about Native is their plastic free deodorant. It's actually the same formula as their regular deodorant, but it comes in a more sustainable paperboard packaging. So make sure to check out Native's new limited edition collection for fall called Coffee House. Normally three plastic free deodorants are $39, but if you use my link and code down below, they'll be $29 and that's 25% off. All right, let's get back to the episode. We get a lot of questions about Bear and how she sails and you know what it's like being with a cat. And here's a pro tip. When you're sailing with your sweet baby, make sure you build her a little baby bed basket that she can lay in so it doesn't slide all around when you're sailing and she has got somewhere nice to lay that's nice and dry and soft. So she can, you know, it's important for her to enjoy her sails too. Sailing with an animal is difficult. Uh, not many have for longevity. That I've, that I've known or met, it's usually like really, really a, a pain. But these little steps you can take to make their sailing more comfortable really helps them. Well, the sun is peeking out some, so it kind of looks like a beautiful day, but there's tons of storms around again. It's just our luck but we're able to pick up enough wind from these storms that we're kind of going pretty fast, I think. So we're probably gonna get to our destination hopefully earlier, but we, as you guys know, I don't know if we mentioned in this video, we don't have an engine. So we'll be tacking into Anchorage. So we'll have to see how that goes, but we're not even quite there yet. Let's hope for no rain. So that storm's right on top of us now. The wind really picked up. There's uh, some white caps out there, and I had to run the jib in real fast. So, but I think we're relatively safe now. The rain's here. <laughs> Tell you, yeah, it's always a challenging sail in Puerto Rico for sure. All right, guys, we sailed more or less to in front of our anchorage. We had to dip and dodge a couple storms, and now we're in front of it. I put a little bit of money in the bank going around another squall here, so I think we're going to be able to put in one tack and be able to run right up in there. Wish one, us luck. One tack, you think? Well, no, one tack to get over there, and then we got to tick tack all the way uh, up in there. But. I was about to say, you're really confident right now. We're going to see. As I said, I was I thought I put some money in the bank and I could just uh, do the one tag here. And for my Mori Povich fans out there, let a detector test determined that was a lie. And I will be making multiple tags to get even near the <laughs> anchorage. So sorry.
tempted to split through a couple reefs and play it risky, but you know what? If the wind dies or something happens, it would be too risky for us. So we're gonna try to clear around the reefs and get into the anchorage safely. Right, Matt? We're taking the safer route. There's still tons of reefs we have to jump through, but uh, I don't know. That's something you gotta think about when you don't have an engine also. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to have an open roadstead anchorage. It's just wide open that you could sail up to, but it's fine. Our Tic Tacker did well last time. And realistically, once we take our canvas down so far, we're only going a knot or two, two, two and a half knots, just enough to keep steerage more or less. So even if we were to hit a rock, <laughs> No, survive. we're not hitting a rock. so quiet and calm out here guys it's unbelievable i'm surprised that we're not even in the anchorage i mean there's barely any wind so we're going in pretty slow we put our head sail in and now we're just gonna tack around but there's not a single car noise you can hear from miles away so calm and so light of wind you can see all the way to the bottom of the ocean So luckily we didn't take that route, the dangerous route, because the wind did actually die. It was calm and we were just calmly going and now it's dead. And Matt's saying he wants to do this crazy idea of taking the outboard off the back of the boat and putting it on the dinghy while our sails are out. And I said, what if a gust of wind comes while our sails are out and we start going and you're trying to travel onto the dinghy? And I said, don't worry about it. Yeah, he said it's not risky. So I just wanted to ask the audience, is that a risky move or not? I'm pretty sure they're going to decide with me, but okay, let's go. I never turned down excitement. All right, you got it. She's all you. All right, wind gods, don't step up. I feel they're stepping up. <laughs> they came for you like that? <laughs> don't you feel it? No. Okay. All right, guys, things only like 130 pounds. And the wind has picked up lightly, so we are slowly going. So I don't know <laughs> this idea, but Matt wanted to do it. We're going one knot, 1.4 knots, so that's something. You did it! I did it. And the wind didn't pick up too much. Was there ever any doubt? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, look at old Tac Tina. How you feeling about it, Bay? I feel great. I feel like I'm the captain now and you don't have to come back. So see you later, guys. You're telling me to go play with my dinghy? All right, Kristen, now that you're tacking Tina in there, tell me how you feel. Tell me all your emotions. What's going over you as a she-captain right now? I feel like I really like self-tacking systems. It's very easy. You don't have to pull the sails to go, and you just plan around the reefs. And it's light wind, so obviously I can't do anything that bad here. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about this. This is when sailing's nice. Maybe I should just sell our boat and we should just get one of, what do you call those little sailboats that you can go around the bay? The little lasers? Yeah. Does anyone want to make a trade? A laser for this boat? So basically what you're saying is we don't need no stinking motor? Well, I think we need a motor for sure, but... All right. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. And guys, as we all know, I'm a really hardened sailor. I didn't put the motor down on the dinghy because I planned on motoring into the anchorage. I just knew that as soon as I did that little bit of work, 
Neptune, who was giving me no win for about the last 30 minutes, would say, oh, you got your motor on now? Yeah, I'll go ahead and give you a little 510 knob breeze to, to go in on Zo. I know how to trick you. As uh, some people would say, it's not reverse psychology, it's reverse reverse psychology. So it's the next day and sometimes after a sale we like to look back on our Navionics chart and see how it went, what we could improve on, what happened from the little track and I have to say guys I did a lot of tacking yesterday and that little bit of tacking to get into our anchorage took what like an hour or so Matt? At least. At least. Almost <laughs> doubled our whole entire trip and we could have pushed it just with the dinghy but I thought well Let's just do a full sail with no motor and it's a lot of work to do that and as you can see around this part right here that's when the wind died down and Matt put the outboard back on so we kind of dragged there and it just makes you see that you can easily just drag from the current and if you're next to some reef or you try to make a risky call next to land and then the wind dies out you could be in a big situation so I learned a lot from looking at that and I obviously learned a lot from tacking. I had to go around different reefs and then we saw these turtles, is what it's called, the turtles. And it's like these big rocks that come out and I had to tack around there so that was exciting. And after looking at that, I kind of want to snorkel that today. So I think we're going to head on over there and snorkel and see what's over there. And this bay is really nice. There's a few storms on the outside, but other than that, you can scream, you can do karaoke, you can dance like an idiot, you can do naked paddle boarding if you want to, and no one's gonna see you. So these are the kind of places I like, but let's get into that water. And we also have an exciting update on the engine, but we'll tell you later about that. But let's get into the water. I'm excited. Let's hope we see some turtles at the turtles. guys so we're just relaxing here waiting for the evening to come and we've been looking on our phones and it turns out that there's another storm on our horizons 
it looks like in 10 days it could be really bad for what it's forecasting right now like 130 miles an hour but <laughs> that's 10 days in advance so it could be a lot of different things but I keep saying but, so cut out all those buts, Kristen, in the future in the editing. Anyways, we are going to be, I guess, planning on what we're going to do for the next week on that situation, but you never know how it's going to be. Yeah, we got to uh, wait a few days to see exactly where the chips are going to fall, but looks like we might have to pop our mouthpiece in for one more kind of rough storm here. Hopefully it doesn't go, but it could, so we'll see. Stay tuned. But on better news, guys, we made a really big decision. I know you guys have been waiting to hear this, and if you haven't, well, I'm going to pretend you have. We made a big decision, and we pulled the trigger on what we're going to do with our engine situation. Yes, we did. We did it. We decided we went ahead and put a deposit in for a 30-horsepower uh, Beta Marine. Um, a lot of you guys had a ton of suggestions for us, and we had a good time reading through all that stuff. Learned a lot about a bunch of different manufacturers of uh, diesel engines. Learned a ton of things that we didn't know, but we decided to go with the Beta for a few reasons. Um, one, pretty much the, the biggest reason is that it could get here the fastest, but then also they came highly recommended. Everyone that has one really you know, speaks highly of them. And then I was just looking over the spec sheets. They don't have any like internal computers or things like that. So they're easier to work on. You can get parts and they're just uh, overall look pretty tough. Look like the simplest solution to our problem. So pretty excited about that. Gonna be a lot of work for sure to get that done. And, and it's uh, gonna take a while to get here, but not as long as the Yanmar would have taken us. So yeah. November, around the beginning of November is what we're hoping for. Fingers crossed everybody that it comes by then. And we're going to be going back to Isleta, right? To put it in? Yep, we're gonna be going back to Isleta Marina. So one of our favorite places, Fajardo. <laughs> back to the boatyard. Back to the boatyard. <laughs> <laughs> But we had a good little reprieve, you know, we painted, we were there for a month, then we had several months off fighting with these hurricanes, and now, you know, we're going back. That's back pretty black. much what I think cruising life's about, you know, fixing your boat, having a little fun, fixing your boat, having a little fun. And then fixing your boat. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. And then if you can have fun fixing your boat, that's when you really hit the home run, you know. <laughs> if you love fixing your boat, boy, I have oh some boy. fun because you do most of the work, but anyways. <laughs> so look for those videos in the future if you guys came from our last boat yard and you're like when are you guys going to start working on that boat again i want to see boat projects get excited hit your bell button down below everybody because they'll be coming but not for a while into the future i guess until november into the so, future <laughs> we have a lot of plans cut out for us if this hurricane that's supposed to be 130 miles an hour doesn't just rip our whole boat down so pray for us guys and We'll see you guys on our next episode. Make sure you guys comment down below. Let us know if you think we made a stupid decision. Let us know if you think that we should have... Like a weed eater and put a prop on the end of it and just... <laughs> and push the boat Let us that. know if you think we should have just went without an engine since I'm pretty much a professional tacker now. Mm -hmm.